Welcome everyone to this webinar on working with some of my favorite AE scripts inside of Adobe's After Effects. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe and I've been an After Effects user for probably about 20 years now. And in this time I've come across a lot of very cool things. Now scripts has been probably one of the greatest inclusions that we've had inside of After Effects because it's let us create not only very very cool realistic movement inside of After Effects, but what it's also done is given us some very essential tools that we can use to speed up our overall workflow. Now, one thing that I want to point out about this webinar is that this is not the seven flashiest, coolest effect type scripts inside of After Effects. No. What this webinar is about is it's about essential tools that I've come across that have helped me get my work done faster than I ever have before. Now you might be thinking, well, Kev, what type of After Effects work do you do? Well, I do a lot of After Effects work for some major Hollywood studios up here in Canada doing a lot of language versioning. I've worked on movie titles from The Rise of Skywalker to Frozen 2 to Spies in Disguise and a whole bunch more. And in these workflows, I need to get my job done as quickly as possible. And like I said, these scripts have come in to help me do just that. Now, I've sort of titled this the seven best. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to call this the seven best plus one. I, I have an honorable mention at the end. And believe it or not, one of these scripts actually contains 50 different parts. Now, I know you're probably thinking, Kev, that's a lot of parts to go through in one webinar. I know. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a very brief sampling of what that script launcher has to offer, as well as some of these other great tools during the course of this webinar. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to command or alt and tab into Adobe's After Effects. I am in the current version of After Effects. And what I've done for each section that we're going to navigate ourselves through is I've created a little information page so that you can see exactly where you are going to be heading to download these scripts if you would like to. Now, something else I do want to point out is that these scripts that I'm talking about here are all either absolutely free or pay what you want. Now, I do encourage you that if they are pay what you want, throw a little bit of money towards the developers of these, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, it doesn't really matter. Anything that you can do to basically help these artists create more of these great tools is always a good thing. Now, I even did that for the purposes of this webinar. Nothing was given to me for free. Well, I say nothing was given to me for free. Could have been, but it's important to support these artists. All right. Now, the first script that we're going to talk about is from, and I'm going to, I, I say it's the team. It's actually one person. And I want to make sure that I get his name right. It's Jeff Almasol. I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And he runs a little site called redefinery.com. Now, redefinery is a very, very cool script uh, I'll call it a tool. I should have called it scripts. What the script actually is, is it's a script launcher. And what it does is it actually gives us all of the scripts in one simple, easy to navigate through location. Now, what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to head down to the remove keys example. Now, I'm also going to close the dojo text generator here just because I don't want to get confused with what we're going to be doing. I'm just going to zoom back a little bit. I'm just going to reposition our image here sort of towards the upper right hand corner of the composition window or of the viewer. And let's come down to the remove keys script. I'm just going to navigate all the way down. There it is right there. I'm simply going to double click. I'm just going to move the script window over here just a little bit. Now this one is fairly self-explanatory in how it works. It's simply designed to remove keyframes. And we have a few options in here as to how we would like the script to look at the layer or layers that we have selected to do just that. So if I drop this down, you'll see I can remove all the keyframes. I can remove the keyframes from inside the work area, inside the layer in out, outside the layer in out, before, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but you get how this works. Now, what's very cool about this is let's say I just have my time bar parked right here and I'd like to remove all the keyframes before where the time bar is. No problem. I'm simply going to come down. I'm going to say select and get rid of all those keyframes before or at the current time. I'm going to say remove and they're gone. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Kev, you could have just lassoed that layer and done it. Well, I could have. What I'm going to do is just duplicate this a few times. I'm going to hit U on the keyboard. And what we're going to do is we're just going to space this out just a little bit. Maybe we'll put one there kind of put one over here, maybe we'll put one there. And now I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to select all the layers and say remove the keyframes before where the time bar is currently located. And now they're all gone. 
So you'll see instead of me having to worry about getting through, and what I should actually just do here is I should just undo that. I'm gonna, just going to hide everything and I'm going to do the same task, remove keyframes, because you'll see that no matter whether I'm viewing the layer or not, once I remove those keyframes, I don't need to be viewing them. I could have all my 100, 200 layers you know, closed or hidden. I could simply just do the exact same task, remove all the keyframes before there, so I don't have to worry about any extraneous animation happening before I need it to happen. So this is already a very cool, and this is one of 50. Now I've got four more that I want to show you here. So let's keep moving here. What we're going to do now is I'm going to come to Divvy Up. Divvy Up was actually a very, it's one of those ones where it's almost so, um, I don't want to say obvious, but it's almost so obvious that I sat there going, how has this not been here, you know, in front of me all the time? And Divvy Up is a very simple one. Let's just come up to Divvy Up here. There's Divvy Up. I'm just going to double click on it. Pretty simple, uh, pretty simple script window. What do I want to divide this up into? Now, you'll see that this current composition is 15 seconds long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it up into three second pieces. So I'm simply going to say divide this up into five parts. Again, make sure I have that layer selected. Say go boom. We've now taken that clip and split it up into five parts. Now, of course, if I wanted to have it as three parts of five seconds, I could simply divvy it up that way as well. And boom, there we go. Done. So you'll see these tools are actually... You know, I, I almost want to say that they're they're technical tools. They're not necessarily creative, but they're technical in the case of what we're doing right now. It's about speeding up your overall workflow. So next, and this was actually a very cool one. New project from comp. Okay, so this one is a basically, again, we're going to come to new project from comp. I'm going to double click. Now, you'll notice as soon as I double clicked, I was immediately prompted to use this script. It says, click OK to save the current project. Sure, well, let's save the current project. Now what it's asking me to do is to save it. I'm just going to call it Webinar 2020. We'll say OK. I'm going to replace it. That's fine. It's now going to say the current project will be reduced to each selected composition, of which I only have one. And then it's going to save it. And if I had multiple compositions selected, it would save a new project for each one. I'm simply going to say OK. We're just going to call this, uh, let's call it New Project, NP. And I'm going to say Save. All right, so it's going to do that, but it's now going to take everything and put it back the way I had it before. So let's take a look at exactly what it's done. I'm just going to go Command or Control and O. I'm going to come to the new project and I'm going to say Open. What it's done is it's taken that project. It's only saved the elements that I used, which in this case is one footage file, stuck them into a new project, saved it, and now this is ready for me to take an email to somebody. Now keep in mind, it didn't collect any files. All the files are still linked to where I have them on my machine. But this is actually a very handy way if you had a massive project and you wanted to break it down into, let's say, five smaller projects with all the media still staying on your system. This is a very easy way to do that. Let's head back here now to our webinar 2020. And the next one that we're going to be looking at is Precompose. Precompose is a good one. I'm going to select that layer like we always do, and we're just going to head to Pre-Compose. There it is. Double click. Now, much like pre-comping inside of After Effects, let me just cancel this here. I'm going to Command, Shift, and C to call this up. Fairly straightforward. We know how this window works. What we're going to do is move all the attributes to a new comp, and I could say adjust that composition, composition's duration to the time span of the selected layers. And I could say, go for it. Fantastic. Except for one problem. I just realized that I'd actually really like to have handles on either side in case I want to fade in and fade out. Okay, well, let's undo it. And you know how this goes. All right, I'm just going to undo what I just did here. We're going to make sure the layer is selected. I'm going to come back to pre-comp. And you'll notice the window is fairly similar except for one major difference. I'm going to move all the attributes to the new composition. And I'm going to trim the new composition to the combined layer's duration and add a handle of one second on either side. So what's going to happen is, is that when our pre-comp is actually created, it's going to create it exactly the way it was created before, but it's going to give me handles on either side. So now we can slip this whichever way we want it to go, or we could add a you know, transition, whatever we want to do. All right, now I thought I'd throw one sort of stylistic one in here right at the end. I'm just going to undo that here. Let's come down to Slicer. Now, oh, I kind of ruined it here. So let's actually take our bear shot. I'm just going to select everything here. I'm going to hit Delete, and I'm just going to come to my bear shot here. That's what happens when you prep these webinars beforehand. Let me, there's my bear there. Perfect. I'm going to take the bear, drag it, and drop it down into its composition. So let's come in now, and let's come down to Slicer. All right, there it is. Double click. 
And the slicer is fairly straightforward. It's like we're going to take an X-Acto knife and we're going to cut this image up into different parts. Now, to begin with, I'm just going to set the margin and the roundness to be zero. And I'm also going to parent these to uh, a null layer. So four and four, I think, is fine. So let's just say slice. Now, it doesn't look like anything has actually happened. However, a lot has actually happened. Now, you'll see that as I start to mouse over, that we actually have four different images broken up into basically 16 panels. We've got basically a panel for each one. Now you're probably thinking, well, Kev, that could easily just be done with masks. And if you move the image, you know, it's obviously going to move, et cetera, et cetera. Well, check this out. I'm just going to come down to a random one like that. Now, the first thing I notice right away is the fact that it is centered up with the anchor point right dead in the middle. And if I was to come to the rotation, because this layer, if I set it to be 3D, can have 3D rotation here like this, this is actually a panel. So what's happened is, is that this image has actually been cropped and repositioned to fit exactly where it would need to fit to make this, I'll say puzzle, complete. Now what I'm going to do is just undo everything I just did there because it's a little bit easier to see if I add a margin of 5 and roundness of 5 as well. And now once I say slice, you'll see that we now have the individual panels which we can now start to create very cool animation with. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just going to pick a different image. It doesn't matter which one. Let's pick, um, sure, we'll pick New York City. I'm going to pick one of these images right there. And I'm just going to Alt or Option drag in some of the different elements here, like this. Okay, And you'll see that we can now start to create very cool animations very quickly and very easily. I could even have these rotate, have one image on one side, another image on the other side, and have them rotate through and change almost like an actual, and I'm not going to call it a pixel board, but basically like an actual board would move. All right. So this was, and I wanted to just throw in a little bit of a stylistic one in there from Redefinery again. You can check all of these 50 free scripts completely free out at redefinery.com slash AE slash RD underscore scripts. All right, let's move on. And what we're going to do is we're just going to, I'm going to close all these because if I'm not careful, I'm going to have way too many timeline panels open here. And it's just going to be a big mess at the bottom of my screen. All right, so let's come into decompose text. Now, decompose text comes to us courtesy of aescripts.com slash decompose text. Now, how does this work? Well, I'm just going to double click on the text that I have here. Now, what I should do again here, again, you see my prep, sometimes I forget to come in and actually reset everything. So let's just call this back up. And this is a very common situation that pretty much all of us have run into. We've typed out a sentence. And in my case, my sentence is the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Now, it's fantastic. I'm going to animate this maybe coming in from the left or right hand side of the screen. However, the client has now gotten back to me and said, you know what, Kev, you know what I'd really like to do is I'd like to have the quick brown fox come in from one side, jumped over the lazy dog, come in from the other side. Okay, fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to mask this. I'm going to mask that, blah, blah, blah. That's already a lot of work that we shouldn't have to do. All right. So what I'm going to do right up here beside my script launcher is I'm going to come to decompose text. Now, you'll see that this is fairly straightforward, fairly self-explanatory. What I would like to do is to decompose this by lines. I'm going to select the text and I'm simply going to say decompose. And as soon as I do, you're going to see that what After Effects or the script specifically has now done is it has broken this down into two lines of text. Okay. Now, to keep the text position where it is, I had it use expressions to do that. Now, if I just undo this to get it back the way I had it before, you'll see that if I don't do that and I say approximate position without expressions and I say decompose, it's going to take the text, it's going to move it somewhere else. That's why I will normally always stick with original position using expressions. Now, where this gets very cool is the fact that I could do it by lines. I could do it by words. And you'll see, this is pretty darn quick. Boom, done. I'm just going to twirl everything back up. There's the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Or if we really want it to be crazy, we could break this down by characters. And I could say decompose. I'll have to give After Effects a second here. And once it's done, there we go. I'm going to select all, twirl everything back up. And there is the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. All right, perfect. So let's close this panel. And again, 
I want to remind you, this script came to us from aescripts.com. Again, completely free. Actually, I believe this one may have been a pay as you go or pay if you'd like to one. And it's aescripts.com slash decompose text. Now, for our next example of our text generator, I actually closed our window here. So let me just come down to our Dojo text generator. And this script and the next few come to us courtesy of the creative dojo.net. You can find this script plus a few others that I will mention over at creativedojo.net. This one specifically at slash store slash dojo dash text dash generator dash script. Now, for the purposes of this example, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hide out of After Effects. I can actually just delete that uh, project that we'd saved out. And I've got a few different text examples of something that a client might send us. Now, when we're getting in and we're taking text and we're selecting it all and we're just copying and pasting it into a composition, it's pretty fair, you know, pretty simple and pretty straightforward. We select all the text, copy it, go in, create a new text layer, paste it in, boom, we're off to the races. But, you know, if I, that was the example I was giving you, that's pretty simple and pretty straightforward, but that's not the situation that we're in right now. So here's the situation that we're in right now. I'm going to come to our Dojo text generator. Now, I don't have anything in my timeline. And what I would like to do is I'd like to bring all that text in. However, I'm going to need to animate each one of those text elements separate of each other. So, for example, I'm going to need to have each one of these names in different positions doing something different. Now I could select each one line by line, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. That's just, it's a lot of work. Or you could copy them all, paste them into After Effects, start masking stuff, duplicating layers and all that type of stuff as well. Don't want to do any of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back in After Effects and inside a Dojo text generator, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open that file. We're going to go with our name list first. I'm just going to say open. There's all of our names. And what I would like to do is I would like to take them and separate them. Now, if I leave it set as comma and there is no comma in here and I was to say create, what the script is going to do is it's going to take everything and it's just going to drop them into what we would expect, which is one layer that has everything positioned exactly the way that we'd want it to. Now, the question is, how did After Effects know what to do as far as the text goes? Well, I'm just going to undo what I just did there. And I'm going to call up our character window. Now, where's it? There's our character right there. Now, let's just change this to be something different here. It doesn't even really matter what it is. How about chalkboard? I'll put its size at about 50. I'll put the space in between the leading. I'll put that at about 60. And I think that's probably pretty good. So now, once I've done that, if I come in and I say create, you'll now see that the text has been created in that font, that font size with that leading. So keep that in mind. Now, as much as I like chalkboard, yeah, we're not using that. Let's uh, let's use Trajan. I'm always a big fan of Trajan. Now, why am I a big fan of Trajan? Well, I did a lot of work on Rogue One, and Rogue One's font was all Trajan. So what we're going to do here, instead of selecting everything and dropping them in, because I'd like to create all these as separate layers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break things down by new line. Now, once I do that, all I'm going to do now is come in and say, create. And you're going to notice that what After Effects and the script specifically is going to do is it's going to create a new text layer from each one of those elements, each one of those lines. Okay. And you can see now we could take each text layer, do whatever we need to do with it, and we'll be all set to go. Now, let's just delete all that select all let's hit delete let's select all this hit delete let's use our second example here i'm just going to hide after effects and our second example is this now there'll be situations where uh, maybe you're given a whole bunch of names that are separated by commas or a different symbol or it's you know it could be anything it could be a credit list and what you need to do is you need to break it down in this case using a specific symbol now, in this case, we have a hyphen that we're going to use to break this text down. And all I'm going to do again, come back in After Effects. We're going to open this text element, the second example. You'll see everything is separated by a hyphen. So what I can do now is I can come down and say, let's have you look for a custom breakpoint, which is going to be that hyphen. All right. Once I do that, I can now say create. And each one of these layers or each one of these elements that are on either side of a hyphen will now be broken down into an individual character or an individual layer. And you can see they're all broken down right there, looking very nice. Now, last example, let's hide out of After Effects. We'll come to the third example. 
This is one that's simply done by a space. Okay, so let's come back in here. All I'm going to do is select all. We're going to open example three. And I'm actually going to select all this and I'm going to copy it. And you'll see why in just a second. So exactly the same situation. I'm going to take this. We'll use a space as the example. And I'm going to say create. There we go again. Very nice. However, we can actually do this in reverse as well if we wanted to. Let me show you what I mean by this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. I'm just going to delete this from there. And I'm going to create a new piece of text like such. Okay. It's essentially the exact sentence that we were just working with, and it's all separated by a space. So with the layer selected, all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, we'll break that back down again, exactly the way that we had it before into each individual text layer. Now, you'll notice slightly different from text decompose. This takes this and obviously just stacks them on top of each other. Now, for me, I normally use this the other way. I don't normally break things up to have them like this. If I was doing that, I would use decomposed text. But I just wanted to show this to you because it is an additional feature of the script that you do have the ability to work with. All right, let's select everything. Let's delete. Let's again close some of these panels because I don't want too many of them here. All right, perfect. Let's close that panel. And let's now talk about the Dojo text updater. Let's come to our information screen here. And I think what we can do here is I can actually just close my Dojo text generator. Let's just close that and let's just fit this a little bit more so we can see it. Perfect. And this next one again comes to us from creativedojo.net. The Creative Dojo creates actually some very cool scripts, some paid for, some not paid for. So you should definitely check them out. Uh, this one here, specifically Dojo Text Updater, creativedojo.net slash store slash dojo dash text dash updater dash script. Now, with this one, this one's actually very cool. And I always say that, you know, Premiere editors and, you know, Final Cut editors for the most part, and even, I guess, for that matter, Resolve editors are actually kind of spoiled. I'm a media composer editor, so I don't actually have access to this function, which is the copy paste parameters function. What I mean by that is we're going to take the parameters of one element and we're going to paste those parameters onto another element. Now, where this comes into play is in text. And this is where this script really is very cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to call it the Dojo Text Updater. Now, as you can see, I'm using my two favorite fonts here. I am using Trajan and I am using Impact. So you can see that I've created some stylistic text here and I've created some boring text. But what I would like to do is I'd actually like to create the boring text in the style of the stylistic text. Now this can be a little bit of a work through to try to get this to, you know, to get this to look the way that you want. It's you could do it, I could duplicate the layer, I could retype things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what I would really like to do here, and I'm just going to close the character panel here, I'm just going to bring down our text updater right here, is I want to copy and paste or copy and update the the parameters of the text from one element to another, one text element to another. So the first thing we got to decide is what do we want to actually copy? So in this case, I want to copy. I'm not going to, not going to select the font, but I want to select the fill, the tracking, the size, the stroke, and the alignment. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy those styles. Now, what's very cool about this is that depending on your project, this can be copied uh, and pasted on an individual element or individual layer basis or across the entire project if you wanted to. So doing it like this, all I'm going to do is I've copied the layer style and I'm going to come down now to my boring text and I'm simply going to say update. Now you'll see, uh, please select the text layer and copy its style first. Let's try that again here. Let's go copy style. Let's come over here. Let's go pay, update text. There we go. It's been updated. doesn't look like it has until I actually say OK. Now remember, I didn't select the font. If I'd selected the font, everything would look absolutely identical. So what I'm going to do now is instead of selecting the font or I'm going to reselect the font, I'm not going to change the fill color. I'm going to leave the fill color as white. So let's copy that. Let's come back to our, actually, we need to make sure we copy it off our stylistic layer and we paste it onto our boring layer like that. Boom, done. All right, now you'll see it's still white in the middle. It's changed the font for me, however, and adjusted the tracking and everything looks pretty darn close to what I wanted it to look like. Now, this is one again. I am constantly working with text, copying and pasting stuff, retyping stuff out. This for me is just a script that just makes my entire life so much 
easier. I'm just going to undo that to put everything back the way I had it before because if I'm going to be providing you with this project, I do want to make sure that I don't have any little extraneous things floating around in here. Perfect. We'll delete all that. There we go. Very nice. And I believe with Redefinery, we are okay. Now, the next one I want to talk about is from, again, the Dojo, Creative Dojo. And this one is coming to us. Let's again just zoom in here. From creativedojo.net slash store slash dojo toolkit dash script. Now, there's actually one parameter I use in here more than I use anything else. So let me show you what I am talking about. So I'm just going to open my Dojo Toolkit composition. Now, here's a perfect example of something that I run into in After Effects all the time. So you can see we've got three shots here with varying stages of letterboxing. And sometimes I need to just get in very quickly and just add a letterbox. Now there's a couple ways that I can do this. I can come in, I can crop each one of these layers properly. I can create a new solid and get in and then mask that, make sure everything's where it needs to be. Or what I can do is simply come to my Dojo Toolkit. Now I'm just going to bring the toolkit just a little bit farther north, just so that it's easier to see. And you'll see that we have a few options in here. We have our quick setups and we have these other options in here as well. Okay, so let's talk about our quick setups first. And let's use the example that I was talking about right off the top, which is talking about letterboxing. Now, one thing I love about this script is that if I click on quick setups and I come down to letterbox, guess what? Boom, done. The letterbox layer has been applied above everything else. And the question is, what exactly is it doing as far as the letterbox? How did it know what type of letterbox to create? Well, if I hit F3 to call up the effect control window, you'll see that we actually have a few expressions going on in here. But the most specific thing that we need to worry about for us is what is the slider going to be set at? Well, we maybe we're going to set it at 2.40 as the aspect ratio. Maybe it's going to be 1.85. Maybe it's going to be 1.66. Now, obviously, you know, these ones are going to show us the letterbox problems as we move from one shot to another. But if I was to come in and set this back to be 2.40, you'll see that we now easily have a letterbox in here that we can now take and move our footage around so that's going to fit wherever it needs to, literally with the snap of my finger. Now, let's take this one step further. What I could now do is simply come in and I'm going to add a vignette to everything. Boom, vignette right there. Now for me, I'm going to drop the vignette below the letterboxing and we can again come right back to the effects control window for some control over this vignette, whether it's something like the radius, you know, its position, or even getting in and adjusting its feather. Maybe we don't want to have so much of a feather like that. Again, a vignette is something that I use all the time. And just being able to get in and with one click call it up is super, super handy. Now, you'll notice that we have a few other options in here. Some of these came from a while back because this script has actually been around for a while. Uh, a camera rig is another great one. A simple way to get in, create a camera rig for you to work with so that you can easily adjust parameters of the camera rig right up here inside of the effects control window. Now for me, really, it's more or less the top three, letterbox, vignette, and camera rig. Now if I was gonna use camera rig, all I would do is simply come to camera rig and boom. You'll see that we have the camera dolly and the camera controller. You'll see now, these are linked to the camera dolly, which we can take and move around. We can dolly the camera wherever we need it to be dollied to. Now of course, these layers aren't 3D, so that's why nothing's moving, but I just wanted to show you the controls that you have access to not only the complete ability to move the dolly in XYZ space, but then the ability to take the camera and rotate it and move it as the dolly is moving as well. Okay, now we do have a few other options in here as well. Let me just select all these. I'm just going to delete them. I'm going to hover over them just so that you can see what they are. We have the ability to center layers. We can fit selected layers to the comp size. We can trim the comp to the selected content. So for example, if I select this layer here and I say trim, you'll see that the comp has been trimmed down to only have that second shot fill the entire composition. And what was left from layer one is sticking out a little bit into the new composition. So there's a few other great tools in here as well for you to play around with inside of the Dojo toolkit. Now again, I'm just gonna come back to the information creativedojo.net slash store slash dojo dash toolkit dash script. All right. 
Now I took the next two and I sort of combined them into one because they're kind of what I would consider to be mini scripts, kind of like what I showed you in the first example from Redefinery. I'm just going to come into my reposition anchor point and add parented null. Now these two scripts come to us from aescripts.com slash reposition anchor point, fairly easy to find. And aescripts.com dash add parented null to selected layers with hyphens in between each word. Now, let's talk about the reposition anchor point script first. I'm just going to remove my paragraph window here. Let's just get everything nice and organized again here. Let's just get rid of the character window. All right. Now, this is a very cool one. So you'll see now what I have here is I'm just going to grab my anchor point tool here and I'm just going to make sure that these anchor points are kind of all over the map here. Very nice. And last but certainly not least, all right. I don't even, oh, the anchor points way up here for that one. Perfect. Okay. So let me just save this out just so I can make sure that you're going to get exactly what you see here as well. I'm going to hit V on the keyboard to call it the selection tool. And this one is fairly straightforward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first layer. I'm going to come over to my reposition anchor point script that you'll see right here. And it seems fairly straightforward. Where inside of this element is the anchor point going to go? Is it going to go centered or is it going to go in any one of the, basically any one of the corners or any one of the sides? Now, in most cases, you just want to bring that anchor point right to the middle. So I'm simply just going to hit on middle. I'm going to say reposition and boom. You'll notice it jumps right over there. See again here, centered, boom, done, anchor. Now this one is where it gets very cool. Only because with this element here, the mask, you would think that the script would ignore it. Only because a mask is not necessarily an element. The actual solid layer that's filling up the entire frame is the element. And then we just have the mask that's in a certain part of it. However, the script will actually honor the boundaries of the mask. And if I say reposition, it will snap that right to the center of the element. Now I'm just going to go back here and just undo that. Let's select all the layers at the same time, make sure we're centered and say reposition. And you'll now see that each one of those layers has the anchor point slammed right into the middle. Now, where this is really cool is that with this element here, much like moving it to the center, I can reposition it on the edge of the mask on any one of the sides or even in the corner. Now you'll notice that with the corner in this case, it doesn't honor the rounded bullnose mask. It actually puts it right in the corner. So if you wanted to make an adjustment, you would have to do that manually. But the concept will work the same across the text as well. Now for me, I'm constantly moving the anchor point to the center of the text. Now, if I keep this on center, and let's just come in here. I'm just going to type something else here. So let's just type right here. I'm going to type in something else. Let's make sure I actually type that correctly. Something else. All right, I'm just going to select that. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller here. And I'm going to reposition it because the one thing that drives me bonkers about the text is how the anchor point is never, ever centered. Now I could come up here to the, you know, pan behind tool and adjust it. But why would I even need to do that? If I have the layer selected, I could just hit reposition and boom, I'm done. Okay, so that is a fantastic one for us to work with. And you know what I'm going to do? Just for fun, let's just go back in and let's just mess this up for everybody again. I'll put that one over there. I'll put this one over here. I'll put this one way outside. This one up here. And last but certainly not least, this one way over there. Okay. Now, add parented null. I am constantly adding null objects to my elements. And this one works fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Instead of me taking this adding a null object and parenting it. What I'm going to do here again, I'm just going to close the paragraph. And let's just make sure that I actually have this called up here. I'm just going to come down here and it's add parented null to each selected layer or to selected layers. Let's go to each selected layer. All right. Now you'll see that by selecting that instantly, it's added just like such. Boom. This layer has now been parented to this null object. Now again, if I was to select them all, Come right back up here. We'll come down to the other one here. Add parented null to selected layers. Okay. And again, you'll see that what's happened is boom, all of these layers have been added to null seven. Now for me, these two, I, that's why I combined them as one sort of idea only from a standpoint of because they're very quick and they serve a very specific quick purpose. 
you know, you can sort of combine the two and use them as one all the time. These are ones that I'm always using. The, the reposition anchor point and the parenting to a null object is just, it's, you know, it's been one of those things where every time I do it, I'm just thinking to myself, wow, I got to do this, you know, in two or three steps where now I can just do it in one simple step. Now, let us, oh boy, we got a lot of compositions open here. So I'm just going to close all the other panels here, all the other timeline panels. Very nice. And again, let's come back to our information page because we're about to head on to the big one. So aescripts.com slash reposition anchor point and aescripts.com slash add dash parented dash null dash two dash selected dash layers. Okay. Now keep in mind, you'll be able to download this After Effects project and quickly copy and paste these into your browser to find these scripts right away. All right. So almost I say last, but certainly not least, this is called the Dojo Extruder. Now, I used to do this process a super long way, which by I was using expressions to do it, and I no longer do that anymore. Now everything is done with this script. Now, what is the purpose of this script? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. I do a ton of 3D text, and I am not a big fan of the built-in 3D, and I think that Element 3D is probably just about the most amazing plugin out there for 3D text. And to be honest, it's for me kind of like shooting a fly with a cannon. Just because there's so many little intricate details and parameters that you, you're going to want to get in and adjust. And for me, sometimes I like to fake it before I make it. Because I need to just get in and create something quick that I know is going to render super fast and it's going to look very good. And this is where the Dojo Text Extruder comes into play. Let me show you what I mean. So I've created some text, and I shouldn't probably shouldn't have called it Rogue One. Maybe what we'll do is we'll call it Rogue Two. Okay, there we go. We'll just give a little bit of kerning here in between the two. There we go. And what I would now like to do is to make this text 3D. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the text, and you're going to notice here, I'm just going to close the paragraph here. Let me just bring my timeline over here just a little bit. Very nice. And I'm going to come to the Dojo Extruder, and you're going to notice that it's very complex. There's one parameter, and it's called Extrude. Now, I'm going to be asked, how many extrusion copies do I want to make? Now, in this case, it says 40. Now, 40 for me is a little bit too much. I'm going to make it 20, just because I want to have 3D in this, but I just I don't want it to be this crazy, massively extruded thing that, you know, that is going to take forever for me to, to navigate through and figure out what's what. Okay. So let me show you how this works. I'm just going to hit enter to say 20 copies is what I want to have. And I'm simply going to hit extrude. And in about two seconds, you'll see that I now have 3D text. Okay. I'm going to zoom in just so you can see exactly what's happened here. And this is actually extruded. What has actually happened here is I'm going to just, let me just close some of these other windows here. Close panel. We only got a couple here, so I'll do it the old fashioned way. And close panel. Perfect. Okay. What has basically happened here, if I unshy these layers, and I'm just going to pull up the composition window, is that as you can see, 20 versions of this composition, or this basically clip that was dropped into a comp has been done, is has been duplicated 20 times. And if you take a look at the position, each time the position has jumped in the Z parameter by a value of 5, which is what's giving it a little bit of a banding issue up here now. The reason that that has happened by a value of five, you're probably thinking, well, Kev, you said 20. Well, yes, there are 20 different layers here, okay? Each positioned at five pixels back in Z space to create this fake extrusion. For me, this is a little bit too fake, so what I'd like to do is with my 3D controls, set that extrusion depth not to be a value of five, but a value of two, okay? Now you'll see that things look a little bit more realistic. However, I'm going to fake some lighting here. Now, this is one thing that I throw in to, uh, I don't want to say give it a little bit more pizzazz, give it a little bit more realism. Now, for me, first of all, I'm just going to get rid of that bevel because I bevels drive me bonkers on text. Now, you'll see as soon as I get rid of the bevel, it's almost impossible to tell that this text is 3D. So let me show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to navigate to the effects window, and I'm simply going to call up the hue saturation effect. So let's just punch in hue. Let's grab hue saturation. I'm going to add it onto the layer below the face layer. I'm going to set the lightness to be minus 50. Okay. Boom. Now you're going to notice that we get a thin line around our text. I'm simply going to copy that and I'm just going to paste it to these other layers like this. And what I now have is 3D text way more realistic looking than you've probably ever seen. 
and it's super simple to get in and navigate with. If I want to get in and adjust its position, I can simply move it like such. Now, what I should have done here is grab the actual 3D controls. I could take this layer, we could move it, do whatever we need to do with it, and we could now get in and create 3D text that's super realistic looking very quickly and very easily. We want to adjust the extrusion depth, no problem. Put in a value of four, boom, that text is now extruded. Do you want to have a bevel in there that's not that big? Maybe 0.5, just to give it a little bit of an edge. You can even get in and change the lighting direction and the lighting color. But this is a very cool, very simple way to get in and create ultra realistic looking 3D text that renders super fast, that is not confusing at all to get in and create. Okay, so keep that in mind when working with this. All you got to do is set how many copies you want. And to be honest, I normally don't have this set to be too high. Okay, the reason being is the more extrusion you have, the more it's going to be noticeable. And to be honest, for me, I don't normally have these massive extrusions that sort of go off into the distance. I have them quick and simple. Once there, I like to get in and just add that little bit of a lightness change. Now, I could change that color if I wanted to make it a little bit more metallic. But I just like to dim it down a bit so it actually appears as though the light is being, a shadow is being cast with the light on the extrusion of the text, super quick and super simple, just like that. And now I have this great 3D text for us to work with. Okay, so let's now talk about the last script. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit my composition to the window and I'm going to save out. And the last one that I'm going to be talking about is I threw in as a bit of a bonus is the Dojo screenshot. Now again, creativedojo.net slash dojo dash screenshot dash script. And what this does is fairly straightforward. I'm going to call up the actual script itself, the Dojo screenshot. There we go. I'm going to go into its parameters and you're going to see then what we have the ability to do is to work in express mode or we can work with the render queue. Now the whole point of this is, is that I kind of want to work in express mode only because that's the point of this. I could be going and taking still frames and going to the output module and saving them that way if I want. But what I want is just to be able to output screenshots with the click of a mouse. And by default, it's going to the desktop, which is perfect. You'll see the default file format is PNG. Now you're probably thinking, well, Kev, I want JPEG or I want whatever color. No, PNG is definitely what you want. I'm going to show you why. So here's why. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hit snapshot. All right. Now what I'm going to do is once I've snapshot that, I'm just going to hide out of After Effects. And you'll see that what's happened is, is that a screen grab of the image exactly where we were at frame 74, which actually works out to be at three seconds and two frames because we are in, I believe we're in 24 frames per second here, is now exported exactly the way that we had it. Now where this gets very cool is that, first of all, I should point out that if I re-export a screenshot exactly where I am, it will overwrite the one that's currently there. That was also exported at full resolution, 1920 by 1080. Whatever we have our quality set to will determine what this snapshot is exported as. So now it's going to be exported as a lower resolution image. So this is now how you can get in, create very quickly, you know, emailable files to send to your client. But here's where things really come into play. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my masking tool and I'm just going to draw a mask that's the worst rectangle. And I should make sure that I have the layer selected when I do this. It's going to be the worst rectangle you've ever seen. I could have probably just used the rectangular masking tool. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a horrible looking mask that looks like that. But more specifically, we're going to feather this right out. And let's just adjust its position here, just down just a little bit like that. And what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to come somewhere else. We'll set the quality to be full and I'm going to take another snapshot. Now, as soon as I take another snapshot, what's going to happen is, is that image is going to be exported to the desktop. And because it is a PNG file, it supports transparency. So if I head into Photoshop, you'll now see that we have that image exported from our composition as a PNG file that honors the masking that was applied to it. So we now have this element as a transparency inside of Photoshop, inside of Premiere, inside of Resolve, inside of wherever we need to work with it with a transparency 
literally with one click of the mouse. All right. So that brings me to the end of our webinar, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some tools in here to be useful. These are tools that I've used for, and some of them, quite a while, and they've really helped speed up my overall workflow. Again, I'm going to be saving this project out. So what I encourage you to do if you're watching this on, a, on an on-demand version of the webinar, to download these scripts, again, throw some money towards those developers. You don't have to, but if you want to support them in creating even more great AE scripts, you can head on over to any of the websites that I showed you throughout this webinar, download these scripts, and follow along. So for Moviola, this is Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.